continuing right where the previous video left off. This is the document part 032, Miscellaneous Plotting, link in the video description. In this video, I'm going to cover the subplot command in MATLAB. All of the code in this video works perfectly in Octave, just as it does here in MATLAB. Upcoming videos are going to cover polar plot, uh, three-dimensional plotting, and some other various aspects of plotting. All right, first of all, subplot. So in previous videos, we've seen how to plot different curves on different figures, and we've also shown how to plot a bunch of curves on the same figure. Well, what if I want something that's sort of, well, in between? I would like different plots to have their own separate little windows, but I would like them to be all on one figure here. All right, so the way I did this is with the subplot command, and I basically just used examples from earlier code that I had lying around, so pay no attention to the specifics of any of these particular curves. And the subplot command is relatively easy. You say subplot, and then the total number of rows you want, the total number of columns, and then which position you want the next plot to show up in. You do need to run the subplot command before you begin plotting, otherwise you'll have it all backwards. So in order to generate this plot that I did right here, I have two rows, two columns, and then at position one, that'll be the upper left right here. Scrolling on down past the code that does the actual plotting, I talked about these details in previous videos, I have subplot 2, 2, 2. The first two numbers are going to stay the same, because I still have two rows and two columns. The third number is going to be the position. So the first graph was in position 1, and this graph is in position 2. Now, I find this to be a little bit confusing. Position 2 is the upper right here not the lower left. Now you might ask, why in the heck would I think that it was the lower left? Well, because literally everything else in MATLAB works that way. Matrices are read down the columns before going to the right to the next column, which is then read top to bottom. Not so with subplot. It is read left to right before going down and read left to right, much like English is read. So in that sense, it's better, but I don't like the inconsistency. And in any case, you've been warned. All right, so I got my code for that second plot in the upper right right there. I'm not going to go through the details of it. And then subplot 2, 2, 3. Still two rows, still two columns. The third position is the bottom left, so I plot it right there. And then subplot 2, 2, 4 for the lower right over here. If I wanted to change this to not be a 2 by 2, maybe I want it to be a 1 by 4, well, what I do is I just change all of these to 1 and 4. I'm speeding up the video slightly here and run it again. All right, and it looks a little bit like garbage, but I can always grab the edge and stretch it out. And now it looks rather nice. Continuing on down. Uh, just a second example of subplot right here. This one's going to have one row, three columns, and first position for this first plot. Control Enter. And again, it doesn't look that great until I make it a little bit wider. And then we can see the details a little bit more clearly. But Subplot 131, and then my code for actually performing the plot for displaying it up there. And then continuing on down, subplot 132 for still one row, three columns, second position. So this will be the second plot, the one in the middle right here. And then scrolling on down, subplot, one row, three columns, position three for that third plot over on the right right here. So subplot, super useful for making graphs that are related to each other all appear in the same figure. And then, by the way, you can go up to uh, save, the save icon right here, and then save it in a variety of formats, including like PDF, PNG, uh, it's a little hard to read, JPEG, there it is. But anyway, a bunch of different formats right there if you want to like put this into a paper or an assignment of some kind. All right, next section. Let's just combine together a bunch of the stuff we learned from this video and the previous video. Control Enter. It doesn't look like much, but I've combined subplot and uh, formatting, like dashed lines with diamonds indicating the points, and line width as well in this graph right here. And I'm just throwing it all together. Most of this, the order doesn't matter. Subplot does need to come before plot. Plot needs to come, of course, after you've created the vectors that are involved in the plot. If you're putting a title and axis labels on, which you almost always should be, but I'm not in this section, they need to come after plot, but before you move on to the next subplot. And then I have the subplot here, and I have another plot that has x and y vectors, has this line formatting, this line width, this marker size. So I made the markers slightly bigger. 
In fact, I don't think I've demonstrated that before. So these black diamonds are not by default this large. I made the marker size considerably larger, size 10 right here. Note that often you will see like capitalization of like the M and the S and the L and the W. It actually does not matter. The lowercase version right here works exactly the same fashion. And it doesn't even matter. I could capitalize the N and like the TH. It makes no difference. And here I'll rerun it and it looks exactly the same. So I like to be consistent and just always make it lowercase. I think that's both easy to read and consistency is nice. That's all for this video. The next video is going to pick up right where this one leaves off and I'm going to talk about the polar plot command.